that I've been building the Anna White farmhouse bed. I actually purchased plants for five dollars from Ed Hart for the king size version. He had a couple of different modifications that I wanted to try out, but I want to go ahead and give you a tour of the bed and show you some things that we've done differently, um, some things we had a hard time with. This bed has definitely not been without trial and tribulation. My next step will be to stain these pieces and then to go ahead and put in the um, mattress slats. So let me go ahead and get started. All right, believe it or not, the headboard and footboard were actually the easiest part of this project. They did require quite a few steps, but um, they were very do doable. So I wanted to show you that on the back of our headboard, I used pocket hole screws. You can see them, let's see, where can you see my finger? Right there, pocket hole screws. So I actually have um, three different screws per board on the headboard, but the top and bottom are covered by this trim piece. Now this trim piece, they show you to use uh, a staple gun. I actually used quite a few deck screws, and these are self-sinking screws. <clears throat> they work really good, uh, and they go through all three pieces. So I did that on all of the trim pieces and on the back of the headboard. And then on the inside, I did the same thing on the inside of the footboard. And the mattress will cover that and you won't be able to see it. So then on the front side, of course, you don't see anything, all right? And then the top, I, I screwed in this piece here, a two by four, um, the same way with the same ducking screws that are self-sinking. And then on top, the same screw. Okay, and then the same thing for the headboard. Do you see the screws there? And I will go ahead and fill that in with uh, wood putty. All right, the most challenging part of this project <laughs> has been these, what do you call them, hooks, um, whatever they are, bed rail hooks. Uh, I had two more ties, and let me tell you, it, was, it wasn't a problem mortising the 4x4. It wasn't a big deal. But mortising the end of this piece, because it's the end, it was pretty challenging. And the thing is, is if you don't do it just right and just the right depth and at just the perfect whatever it's really hard to get those things to clasp um i don't know if i would do it that way again i i really like the idea of being able to take the bed apart easily but honestly it's not real easy with these because you know i didn't mortise perfectly the depth isn't perfect, the board isn't completely straight, which makes it hard to line up to both sides. Um, I had to call in my husband to help me with this part, and he got, he, got it, he got it to work, right? But I don't know if I could do it myself. Anyway, so I think I might try to do something different if I were to build this bed again. Okay, one other thing. A lot of people will put bolts through the 4x4 to connect it to the plank of the headboard here. I did something a little different. Not sure if it's perfect, if it's the right thing to do or not, but this is what I did. See those three Craig jig holes? That's how I attached the 4x4 to the main part of the headboard on both sides. There's three more holes there connecting it. And I believe that I'm going to go ahead and on the bottom put another 2x4 just for extra reinforcements and I'll use pocket holes with that as well. So there's the bed so far. Hopefully I can get those holes filled in well and stained and the rest is smooth sailing. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Okay, so this bed is pretty much complete, but before we take it in the house, I wanted to go ahead and show you um, some of the things that we did. 
Okay, so number one is the stain. We used a tea stain and a vinegar stain. Vinegar soaked in steel wool all night. I can show you. Kind of looks nasty, but the one on the left there is white vinegar that was soaked in, or that had uh, steel wool soaked in it all night. And there's a rag in there. It, it is clear at the beginning and then it starts to change color. And then over here I've got a tea stain. So that's just Lipton tea with a rag in it. And I started with that and then moved to the vinegar stain. Now, uh, these boards here, are a little bit better quality from Home Depot. And so they don't take the stain quite as well. So I did a few extra coats of tea stain on those to darken them up. And the one thing about this homemade stain is that I have wood feel. I've got like five different spots on the uh, footboard and the headboard. And the tea and vinegar stain do not take wood fill. So what I did was took a little Q-tip and a little bit of regular stain and filled those in. And I'm not real happy with it. Um, it'll do. There's another one. Um, but I'm kind of wishing that maybe I would have just left the screws because the screws are a copper color. And I don't think that it looks like there's some there. I don't think it looks all that bad. I actually think it would have given it a little bit of an industrial look just to leave the screws instead of filling it in and having these weird spots. Anyway, so this is the footboard. Um, these uh, Craig Jig holes really don't bother me at all. I'll show you on the headboard too, on the back. Um, you can see big jig holes there that are attaching the 4x4 four four. and then down the middle we have some Craig jig holes. The other Craig jig holes are hidden behind the trim pieces. Okay and then I wanted to show you how we did our slot boards and the side rails. Now it was suggested to take my 2x4 and notch spots out for the two by fours to sit into. However, I didn't have the right saw. And I recently helped my niece move and saw that her bed that she purchased from a store had blocks like this screwed on top of the side rail to hold the um, flat boards into place. So I went ahead and did that. Now that was some work because I had to pre-drill each hole before I screwed it into the two by four, otherwise it split the blocks. And I still split some blocks. I probably split about four of them. Um, well, there's one right there that's still kind of split, but I'm just going with it because it didn't split all the way through and I got lazy. Anyway, we have a Naturopedic mattress. We don't have a box spring. So that's why I have my side rails sitting up so high. Um, and the Naturopedic uh, mattress company says that your slat boards need to be two inches apart so that's why we have so many and I've got a few more to fill in that I've taken out there and then I also wanted to show you how we did some support so I've got three different two by fours with these four by four supports under them there's one there one here and then another one there if you can see it so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that that's going to be um, sturdy enough. Another option I thought of doing was to attach a 2x4 um, to the 4x4 headboard and then run, run slats down to the footboard. Um, but I think that we're going to be okay with the way that it is. So... I'm pretty happy with the end result. My husband asked me if I would do this again, knowing what I know now. I don't know how to answer that. Maybe give me a few months and then I might be able to <laughs> be a little more enthusiastic about it. Mm -hmm.